Mr. Bean. I just picked up this boat for a friend of mine. He wants a couple things installed. He's got some electronics, he's got a battery charger, and he's got three seats. Let's take a look at this boat. All right, so it's got an old Mercury, oil injected, of course. It's a Jason, 16 foot boat. Hey, it's a Tennessee trailer. I didn't know that we made trailers. Looks like the base. Yeah, that's a brand new part. He's a bit worried about a 115 on a boat this big. He's an older guy. He's not sure he wants to go that fast. Um, of course, I told him, go fast. So I've offered to take the boat out when I'm all done. I've got to figure out the wiring I need. I've got to figure out all that, all that fun stuff of any project out there. Wiring and like welding are the two things that I enjoy the most. I'm excited for this. That's the live well. So the port and starboard are storage hatches. Oh, that's not fun. <laughs> so hill life just got me. Um, luckily the boat didn't try to roll down the hill. But as I was standing back here behind the, the axle, the whole boat just tipped up on me. <laughs> Always something on the hill. Our weather's crazy. It's cold again. I want to run a trunk line from the battery up to the main console. I'll then power the bow graph with that main power line. ABYC standards for that length um, put me at a six gauge for a 50 amp circuit. 50 amps should be more than plenty. I've got to re-terminate these. Lots of wire chewed up. I guess I'll cut that out. He's having an issue with his uh, fuel gauge not reading. So I'm not sure if it's fuel sender unit, bad wiring or what. Ugh. Anybody who knows me knows that I hate scotch locks. They are the worst connector ever invented and put on a boat. They're 10 times worse. I hate bad wiring. You know one thing I haven't seen? Fuses. I've got enough stuff hanging on this boat that I now need to rip out the fuel tank. So that's what I'm just about to do. I've got the fuel tank pulled out now. I had to come out here at lunch when the weather was warm and the rubber was a little bit pliable and just work that out. Now I get to clean the bilge. This is one nasty bilge, as all Ernest would say. This is the back side of the live well. Here's that delamination I was talking about. Come over here. This is the fuel tank box you can see it's kind of breaking apart it's all coming off there over here it's a similar story it's got a lot of wiggle um, quite a bit broken there the floor the floor right here, where it was actually holding the fuel tank down, is very soft. Had three decks or three uh, little screws holding it in. One of them on each side was holding. This is the other side of it. I spoke to the owner about the boat. He found this boat in a barn for about three weeks. It's cleaned out rat nest out of this thing. That's why the bilge was disgusting. And that's why I've seen rat chewed wires. I'm gonna verify 100% that the bilge pump works. Pump is spinning, I'm sure you can hear that. No water's moving. Eureka, I have a discovery. The bilge pump and the aerator are wired to the wrong switch. The bilge pump switch flips on the aerator. The aerator switch flips on the bilge pump. So you heard the aerator running completely dry. I'm now gonna flip on the true bilge pump with the aerator switch. Bilge pump is the rule. We've sprung a leak. So the bilge pump works, except the hose is busted. So nothing goes overboard. <laughs> it's been raining for the past few days here. I've got a little bit of water in here. 
I've got to move the boat to where all the water goes directly out and doesn't sit in a pocket like this. But this is a beautiful cloudless day. And tomorrow, it's going to start raining for the next five days in a row. I've got to get some fiberglass knocked out on this boat and get this stuff fixed so I can start putting this thing back together. <sighs> Here goes first time fiberglassing. I'm a little nervous. Never done it. I've watched a lot of boat works today. Hey, shh. I've watched a lot of boat works today in preparation for this. He mainly runs two kinds of fiberglass, so that's what I bought. He runs a certain resin, so that's what I bought. He showed how to mix it, so that's what I'm doing. I'm literally just hoping that I can learn something on YouTube and do this project correct. I probably should have moved it sooner. There's quite a bit of water that's coming from that side of the boat down here. I'm actually patching that whole corner on both sides. I guess I could always start on this side, which is a little drier. But I've got water running off the deck that's coming down. I probably should have done this yesterday. Didn't even think about this. Whew. Mercy. It's warming up. I've got this sanded down. I was using a brand new Harbor Freight air sander. It cost me 20 bucks, so I figured it was a good purchase for this project. Enough yapping, let's start working. There's my first layup. That's three layers, two layers of chop strand matting, one layer of 1708 in the middle. That looks like he does on boat works today. That's my second layup. I was fighting water on that one and it literally ran down the mat while I was working on it. So it all went very cloudy. Next time that I do fiberglass, I'll make sure all water is away from where I'm going. I thought I had it dried. I thought I had all it taken care of. Had I thought a little bit more, I would have just flipped the boat around. I'm all done with the fiberglass. It's now fully curing out, and I'll show you what I did. I wind up running about 18 inches, which takes me to that corner right there, on up there a little ways. And then I ran another probably six inch piece that tied into the original 18 inch patch, and it runs back in there. So that way it ties that corner, which was broken right in there. You can still see the divot. That was all broken. The white is all gel coat. So I used the laminating resin without wax. So I had to put something with wax over it, which the gel coat does have. So now that's fully curing. And now that is much more solid. So I'm very happy with that. So now tomorrow it's supposed to rain and then all the way through um, I think the next 12 days we're expecting rain. I pretty much had one shot to knock this out and I started the day pretty terrified about doing this fiberglassing. I've ended the day falling in love with fiberglassing. This has been so fun. I love it. This was so enjoyable and I'm looking forward to the next time that I can do some fiberglassing. We've done a little bit of work since you last saw this. That pump right there, that is the live well pump. I've installed a fully automatic thousand gallon per hour rule bilge pump. There's the float switch for it. This is the original rule 800 that's on the switch up on the console. The fully automatic will flip on obviously automatically when there's water. It goes out that new great big O hose. That's an inch and a quarter. Goes out there. You're good, buddy. Okay. And then this 800 still goes out over this way in the worst way possible we've got um, all of these 
wires wrapped up went ahead and I've got these labeled so that we know engine versus the console battery switches here got the hummingbird mount here with the wires up here this piece was already there so I went ahead and used that the other hummingbird mount up here all these are plugged looks like it's got white zits all over it but it's all the holes from I don't know 30 years of mucking around with stuff got an Atwood plug replace that so it's, it's only 12 volt so we don't need that so that's plugged I've got a new fuel sender unit coming for this this is just about to drop in all the wires up under here got nice and cleaned up my console wiring fuse block and my ground and then back here I've got my grounding and I've got I know there's a lot in the way but I got a 50 amp fuse a maxi fuse here and the battery switch and this battery switch powers the original switch panel so it powers everything up on the console plus what I just installed so that way the battery switch actually shuts off the boat this is the power for the fully automatic bilge pump which has its own fuse right there the port battery and I've, I've yet to install my battery hold downs but the port battery is the 12 volt battery for the trolling motor we've uh we've been working out here to finishing this up wrapping up our list of things that we got to do i think it's time to drop this fuel tank in and uh start hooking everything up fingers crossed that i've got everything done but i've got my list i've i've triple checked it i'm like santa only better i've triple checked my list and uh i think i'm i think i'm good you know that that end of every project where you hope that you haven't left anything or forgotten about anything that's where i'm at so hoping i didn't forget anything Just like that, this fuel tank is in. It sure was a lot harder coming out than it was going in. Now I just gotta put the port and starboard batteries back in, get them all wired up, hook up my live well overflow, and that'd be it. This boat is finally at the point we're gonna take this out on the water. We'll hook the side by side up to the boat so I can drag it out of the, out of the yard because it's been raining for two days. If I get my truck here in the yard, with a trailer behind it i'll probably get stuck the kubota gets to earn its keep okay i'll open that hatch for favor so if we notice in here it looks quite a bit different so this is the trolling motor battery i've got an mrbf mbrf whatever big old fuse um so everything's fused so the trolling motor is nice and fused which is great then over there that's all set up i've got four connections which is the max that you want so i'm at the max if anything else needs to be hooked up we'll do something else new fuel sender unit new lines going in so they're they can be unhooked bilge pumps under there you can't quite see them that's the live well pump there's a bilge pump there there's one further down there that you cannot see but this fuel tank has no fuel in it because the owner wants to wants to take it out and see everything about it he's never seen this boat run i don't believe so go ahead and close that buddy we're gonna go take this out 
and see how she runs and hopefully not sink. There's nothing sketchy about parking a boat downhill held up with a couple concrete blocks. It's want to, don't it? Yeah, it does. Dad, you're bleeding. Where? Left knee, right side. Watch you gonna get gas on. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, carburetor. Huh? Carburetors are leaking. What is? Carburetors. See, there's all this fuel down here. Mm -hmm. Carburetors there. Puddle of fuel right there. So they're flooding. So we know they're getting gas. Oh yeah, they're getting fuel. All right, let me put this cover back on. Oh, so I guess we just gotta go back home. Well, this is not the way we wanted this to go. I think those carburetors need some work. Call it for tonight and take it to somebody. not go how the day was supposed to go. I feel the same. All is not lost. He called his brother-in-law who has worked on this motor before. I haven't done anything on the motor other than change spark plugs. He's called his brother-in-law and said, hey, you had this motor running. What did you do that we didn't? I forgot the choke. It's kind of like starting a lawnmower at this point. So you gotta set the choke. The way these old ones work, and I've completely forgot, because I haven't messed with an old one in a very long time. The way these old ones work, you push the key, you go the first click, flip the ignition on, push the key in, and then start it. And pushing the key in, I guess, like, closes the choke so that it can start. Once it, it kicks over and tries, then you let off and just start it normally. We forgot the whole push in. Remember the old Looney Tunes where someone would feel dumb? That's how I feel right now. Yeah. Take two of trying to get the boat to start it. Take two was a fail. This is not how I would like to end this video, but the boat has 
major issues with the engine. He's not sure if he's going to have to replace the entire engine. He's trying to see if he can do anything just to make the thing work. He has more important issues than the boat. His son is actually going through cancer right now. His son is also our preacher at church. So we are right there with him. We're doing anything possible for the family that, that we're able to. We love them. We're there with them. We're walking through them with this. We're holding their hands. We're supporting them. We're doing lots of praying for them. So their love, they feel the love. They feel the surrounding of love. And this was one thing that I could do to, to try to help take their mind off of all of that. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to get it running like it was supposed to. It's just one more sad thing for the family, and I hate it. 